On this edition of Bay Area Bountiful, we visit the farmer's market. Markets are an important part of life in Northern California, and we explore how farmer's markets are sustained by the communities they serve. We follow farmers getting ready for market day in Santa Rosa and meet the people who organize one of the markets in Oakland. Then, in Silicon Valley, we see how government, nonprofits, and agriculture work together. It's all coming up next on Bay Area Bountiful. Bay Area Bountiful is made possible in part by Rocky the Free Range Chicken and Rosie the Original Organic Chicken. The Sonoma County Agricultural Preservation and Open Space District, Made Local Magazine and Sonoma County Go Local. Support also provided by Pepperwood Preserve and through the generous support of the Sonoma County Water Agency. Cultivate. Celebrate. Connect. At Coyote Family Farm in Pingrove, they see farming as a combination of spiritual practice, political act, community engagement, and art form, and believe passionately in the importance of maintaining small local farms as a way to educate people about where their food comes from. Coyote Family Farm sells their products at the Santa Rosa Community Farmers Market. The mutually beneficial interactions between farmers and customers inspires a new generation of small farms using sustainable practices to bring a diverse array of crops to local farmers markets. I always liked physical labor and being outside and working with my hands and playing sports and things. There's a history associated with working this way and working with one's body and tending the land that goes back a long, long time. Knowing how to propagate strawberries and knowing how to grow peas and herbs and corn and I think that's really valuable knowledge. It's one of the reasons I keep doing markets is seeing the faces of the people they get to enjoy these berries and the kale and I think about them when I'm picking <laughs> going, oh, I hope they'll enjoy these berries. There's the people who just, even on a small scale, they just focus on five crops and they just do everything just so. And there's people where everything's just a jumble and everything's full of life, but it's always on the edge of chaos. And I like to think we're somewhere in the middle. <laughs> This land was part of the original Vallejo land grant, part of a vast tract of land, and it's been chopped up and chopped up into smaller and smaller pieces over the years. Younger farmers that are making it now are quite realistic. Even if they may be drawn by the values of going back to the land, I think those that are making it a viable living are really making tough choices. We've adjusted what we grow based on what people really like and what does well here.
tomatillos and eggplant both got. <laughs> but then I planted a home garden so that I could grow them for myself. And I have always been very drawn to diversity in the field. So I want to grow flowers, but not only that, I want to grow 50 kinds of flowers. I want to grow lettuce, but I want to grow 25 kinds of lettuce. And while that's great, and I think that's part of what attracts people to our market stand and is appealing for our farm share, we have a lot of different crops, but it drives you crazy over time if you don't have the energy to keep up with it. And so learning how to be disciplined about not taking on too much is, <sighs> yeah, I'm working on it. I'm a farmhand here at Coyote Family Farm. I graduated from Boston University in 2012 and I studied environmental analysis and policy. I got into farming because it felt like a good solution to a lot of the environmental problems that I was learning about. This seems like a really good way to change how we live, to come back to how we used to live. Our impact as a species could be a lot less if we come together in these small communities and learn how to provide for ourselves. This is how I'm voting and this is how I'm being politically active. If you buy our produce at the farmer's market or through our farm share, that's all going to us to run, keeping this farm running, to paying local people. And there's a lot of transparency. I mean, if someone wanted to come visit the farm and see our crops growing and see how we treat them, they can. And we're always just trying to figure out how much intervention we want to do because you know there are organically allowable sprays, but they still have an impact. A lot of those are very general, and so they impact beneficial insects and bees as well. So it's definitely not something to be taken lightly. So far, our method has just been to have diversity, accept some loss if we have to, and then yeah, physical control like covering with the row cover. Even just having flowering plants next to your vegetables and bringing in pollinators and beneficial insects, it's beautiful, but it also creates a richer ecology. It's a very labor intensive, but not very land intensive way of farming. There is an element that we've lost of understanding where our food comes from and who the people are that are involved with growing this food and the impact it has on the land and we belong to this planet. We can take care of it or we can make really, really, really bad choices <laughs> too. But there's such possibility. That's what I'm doing here is fronting the essential facts of life, living simply getting my hands in the soil and picking the food that I eat and sharing it with the local community. And now that I've seen what that's like and the satisfaction that comes from that, I can't choose not to do that. It's so fulfilling and so fundamental. The Agricultural Institute of Marin manages seven farmers markets in the Bay Area, one of which is the Oakland Grand Lake Market. The market managers understand why farmers markets are important community events and make financial accessibility for those visiting the market a priority. 
The organizers work hard to ensure that each market is tailored to the needs of the community it serves. We spend a day at the Grand Lake Market, hear from farmers about their market experience, and listen to community stakeholders discuss how they see the Grand Lake Market going forward into the future. The not so exciting part of what it takes to operate a farmer's market is the legwork that goes into operating a market that uh, starts right before a market even you know, starts at the beginning of each week. I get there at about uh, six, six o'clock and you know, we're showing all the vendors where to go. We're setting up our information booth, our ATM machine. Um, we're coning off parking spaces, all really logistical things that just sort of allow the market to happen. And I mean, it's like a million people doing things at once because once you tell people where to go, everyone's just setting up their own individual mini business within the greater market. If you think about it, it's like getting 100 businesses to pop up and operate in a two hour period, which is a very short amount of time. Leading up to the market, the main thing is solidifying the map for the week, which it doesn't change a whole lot. We want vendors in the same spot because people need to find them. Um, vendors don't like to be moved. Um, so it's more just you have some slight variances week to week. Sometimes we have people who are canceling or who just need a special consideration for the week. There, there's all sorts of communication throughout the week with vendors as well as planning for the day of the market. So just making those slight adjustments to the map. And you know, that's like the biggest part is just kind of solidifying who's gonna be there, where are they gonna be, do I have all the supplies that I need. Typically my mornings start about 3.30 in the morning, so I go to the farm and load up all the, we have to figure out what we're gonna bring, bring because we do three markets on Saturdays and three on Sundays. So we load up the van, we drive about an hour, 10 minutes or so, and then we unload the van, get everything ready. So, so it's typically our day starts at 3.30 and I'll probably be in at about 5.30, 6 o'clock tonight. So, so it's a long day. <laughs> But we, but we, like I said, we really enjoy it. We love, the customers really appreciate us. And so that's, that's really why we do this. I've been here since this market opened. I was the first organic grower in this market. And uh, still, I'm doing good. You know, everybody likes my product. So I'm happy with that. Uh, and we have a very, very good uh, relationship with everybody. So, so we part of the, uh, part of the, like a part of the family. So uh, everybody help each other. To, in this business, a lot of times we forgot things because very early, very hurry, very far away. But uh, we help each other. My name is Andy Najaris. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Agricultural Institute of Marin, which we commonly call AIM. We run seven certified farmers markets. We want to ensure that each farmers market meets the needs of the local communities. So different communities, there's different demographics, different public spaces, different types of um, market participants, farmers and producers. So we want to make sure that we're meeting the demands of the local community residents and we're offering a variety of products that are relevant, that are culturally appropriate, that are going to meet the needs of local community members. Grand Lake uh, and the Oakland community in general is really proud to support uh, Oakland-based businesses. And we try to keep that in mind when we are setting up the market. One of them that just started Base Camp Bakery. Um, it's a fantastic husband and wife couple. Um, they source their grains from one of our farmers. They bake bread. And I wanted to use uh, California whole grains uh, to support local agriculture and to be more a part of our community. 
me and my wife, uh, we started this together and she works with me every Saturday at the farmer's market. It's incredible running a business with your partner. It's just like there's so much, uh, we're working for the same things, we're on the same path and um, we both care about it, you know, to the fullest extent. So it's really sweet. Uh, also just watching it grow together and just working on the same team. Well, the farmer's market, we see the same people, you know, typically week after week, and we've actually developed, you know, relationships with them. We talk, you know, about our kids, and it's nice to also just be able to, so they can actually see the farmer, and they can actually ask us questions about, you know, the fruits and the vegetables. I really, like, enjoy having, you know, the conversation with my customers. We also know that farmers are able to get really great returns when they're selling directly to consumers. So you're cutting out a lot of the distribution channels and a lot of the middlemen as part of the supply chain. The markets are really, that it helps them sustain themselves and stay in business. The average farmer comes home with 90 cents on the dollar when they uh, sell at a farmer's market. The average that they get at a grocery store is like 14 cents or 17 cents on the dollar. So it really does put money in the pocket of the farmers and it keeps them farming for generations. And that's really why we're here. In running the Grand Lake Farmers Market, we have a public-private partnership between AIM and the City of Oakland. So tonight's meeting was focused on bringing the community stakeholders together, people who shop at the market, people who sell at the market, to share ideas and inspiration for creating a better farmer's market experience. Could you let us know what, how much you're collecting from the vendors and then how much are you giving back to Oakland? I didn't hear anything about maintenance of the park. I feel that the market is not doing its share in, t in taking care of it. As we're working towards the development of a long-term agreement, we will be outlining the specific roles and responsibilities for AIM as the market manager. We're also making sure that we're able to continue to assess things like trash pickup throughout the day or at the end of each market date. I'm just wondering if AIM would consider giving seniors who are on limited incomes a small uh, discount at the farmer's market. One of the programs that we've actually just started is called Senior Bonus Bucks. Right now we're working through a process to get that expanded. At this point, I can tell you that Andy is bringing a breath of fresh air to the situation. His predecessor never came to Oakland or once for the last 14 years. Andy has been here numerous times in the brief two months he's been CEO. However, we are very interested in seeing a transparent process occur between AIM and the city. People are very passionate. They care deeply about the quality of the market. They care deeply about the splash pad park. And I think that really shows that what we're doing and taking the time to listen is valuable because then we can respond to their needs and make sure that we're creating a market that's relevant to everyone. The South Bay enjoys many farmers markets. The San Pedro Square Market in San Jose is a joint effort of the San Jose Downtown Association and the Pacific Coast Farmers Market Association. They've created a thriving weekly market in the heart of the capital of Silicon Valley. The farmers market held at the San Jose Medical Center has a mission of increasing healthy food consumption and providing services to the neighbors. The San Jose Japantown Farmers Market has thrived on a vacant city corporation yard for several years and has become a cherished part of this vibrant Japanese American community. Farmers markets are now an important part of life in Silicon Valley. Downtown San Jose Farmer's Market happens on Fridays, so often I will get on my bike and take my basket and ride down to the San Pedro Square Farmer's Market and pick up what I need for the weekend. The farmers come in and put out all of their produce. You can just walk up and down the street and check out everybody's food and figure out what's a good deal today, what looks really good, then go back and buy the stuff that you want to buy. I'm going to make an Italian caponata. Oh man, that sounds really good right now. <laughs> Have a good week. When you shop, you're shopping locally. You're keeping our community vibrant when you shop at the downtown San Jose Farmers Market. Everybody comes. It's, it's a super diverse group. 
I am a farmer's market manager with Pacific Coast Farmer's Market Association. We manage up to 50 farmer's markets all around the San Francisco Bay Area. Here in the South Bay, PCFMA operates about 14 farmer's markets. Over 4,000 business members make up the San Jose Downtown Association. We are a nonprofit that represents the businesses and we market and promote downtown as well as advocate for the businesses with clean and safe and beautification and promoting events. For over 30 years, this has been the best downtown tradition in San Jose. Going to the farmer's market is more fun. It's an outing. It's not just a chore of going to the store. You get to talk to the people who actually grew your produce and find out a little bit about their lives. Where's your farm? Uh, we're located in Chola, by Modesto. So you have a better connection to what you're buying. Thank you for coming. We try to do a wide variety of outreach to really reach all of our downtown residents, especially our seniors. They take a lot of public transportation. We're so close to where they get off the light rail. We've had a partnership with VTA for a long time. People ride the VTA and show their passes. We do give them a dollar in carrot cash that they can spend on produce or fruit at the market. It's very popular. The CalFresh program nationally is called the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP. And what it does is it provides food benefits for low-income families. It's a wonderful idea for farmers markets to accept CalFresh benefits. Nowadays, it actually just looks like a credit card, which is called an electronic benefit transfer, EBT card, just like your ATM. You just go to the information table, tell them that you want to use some of your EBT dollars to spend at the farmer's market, and we got a little machine there, we'll fix you right up. Thank you very much. They also are able to get a free match called the Market Match Program. The Market Match is an excellent program. You can double your money that you're using there, up to $10. So if I buy $5 worth of fruits and vegetables, I can get walk away with $10 worth of fruits and vegetables. So it really helps stretch the CalFresh dollars. There are 27 farmers markets in Santa Clara County that participate in Market Match. Campbell's Farmers Market, Evergreen, Melpitas, Bascom Avenue, Valley Medical Center. Some of them are during the week, some of them are on the weekends. There's the surprise element to going to the farmer's market because you don't know who you'll run into. So it's a really nice uh, social event as well. It makes me feel great. I have a lot of friends that tell me that they work half days on Fridays or if they're working from home and live nearby, they really make this kind of their hangout on Fridays. It's really a community event. We see a lot of people sticking around and lingering. And really, if you want to run into your friends, this is kind of the place to be on Friday afternoons. Kaiser Permanente has actually been our biggest supporter of the farmer's market. It's a really, really great partner. Kaiser Permanente hosts and supports farmer's markets in the South Bay. It is Kaiser Permanente's mission to improve the health of the communities we serve and our members. And farmer's markets fits into this beautifully by offering easy access to locally sourced fresh fruits and vegetables. Sometimes people will just make their appointments on Friday so that they can hit the farmer's market at the same time. Many of our farmer's markets offer SNAP, WIC, and Market Match. One in five people in Santa Clara County. That's 38,000 individuals are eligible for CalFresh. Not all of them participate. Su supermercado de agricultores cercano We have done a lot of work to try to reach out to our population. So we developed outreach materials in multiple languages because we really wanted to reach all the diverse populations that live in our county. We also send out texts, robocalls, and email blasts to all of our people on CalFresh informing them about this great program. Members really love the farmers markets at Kaiser Permanente. In fact, a study that we conducted showed that having them on our campuses actually increased the fruits and vegetable consumption of those that shopped there by 74% and increased the variety of fruits and vegetables those folks ate by 71%. When you go to the farmers market, the foods that you're buying are fresher and you can smell the difference. You know, you pick up a peach and smell it and you get a real fresh peach smell. They leave out samples for you so you can test the produce. Can I try one? Yes, a strawberry? Yes, please. Yes, amigo. There's an amazing farmer's market in San Jose, Japantown. 
Uh, it's great to, to be so close to such a quality farmer's market. Japan Town Farmer's Market is uh, independently run. It's run by the uh, Japan Town Business Association. I think the neighborhood really enjoys having the farmer's market here. Uh, they feel like it's part of the community because people, they, they like all know each other. You know, they're always saying hi. There's a lot of Japanese varieties, Chinese and Vietnamese varieties that you wouldn't see in other different areas. You definitely can't find these kinds of varieties at your local grocers. The food is superior to anything that you would buy in the store. And it's uh, healthier, you get more nutrition from it. You learn how to eat seasonally. I've been shopping at this farmer's market for over 16 years. We depend upon volunteers to make our market go. We only get paid with smiles and thank you for showing up. There are so many benefits. When you buy food that's closer to home, the carbon footprint of that food is lower than it would be. Getting to hang out with your neighbors and your friends. Mm. The caponata that I made, I took to a party and it too was fresh and a big hit. There's never any leftovers. It's gratifying to be able to provide that kind of fresh food to people. I hope people support their farmer's market. They'll be glad that they did. Once a staple of rural America, farmer's markets now serve a diverse population, from urban centers to suburban neighborhoods. As we learn more about the food we eat and the people who grow that food, we make connections that build community and integrate agriculture into our everyday lives. Farmer's markets are an essential part of what makes the Bay Area bountiful.